Hi everyone, my name is Imogen. I am a third year geography with German student at the London School of Economics. And today I thought I would answer one of my most asked questions that I get on here and also in real life, which is how on earth do you make notes for university? I know a lot of first year students are feeling very, very overwhelmed by the fact that they've started university and they're getting lectures, they've got readings, they've got all sorts going on and they just don't know how to effectively and efficiently make their notes. So today I thought I would address that. Obviously, I'm going into my final year, so I've had two years of perfecting my notes and my note-taking skills, so I thought I'd share my top tips with you. So when you come to taking your notes, the first thing that you're going to need to address is on what device or how you're actually going to take those notes. Are you going to opt for the traditional pen and paper route? And I would say this is best for students who study STEM-based courses or courses where you might need to draw diagrams. So a lot of students at LSE don't actually opt for this route unless they're doing economics or they're doing maths or accounting. Because if you're doing a more social science-based course, so something looking like geography, sociology, politics, international relations, where you don't have a lot of diagrams, but you have a lot of texts, and you're gonna have a lot of words in your notes, I would say your traditional laptop is gonna be better here. Um, or if you've got one of those tablets that can have a keyboard, that's also fantastic. However, if you are going for the pen and paper route, you've obviously got the very traditional write it on a piece of paper um, with a pen route, or you can opt for the slightly more expensive option, which is maybe having an iPad or a tablet with one of those digital pencils. This saves a lot of space in your bag because obviously you're not carrying around pen and paper. You've also got the benefits of it being backed up. However, I do appreciate this is not a financially accessible option for everybody. And these tablets and things can be very, very expensive. I remember when I first turned up to LSE, I was shocked by how many students had MacBooks. I honestly thought, is this university sponsored by Apple. You do not need the most expensive laptop. I know so many people who have got through three years of university with a basic laptop with Word downloaded on it and they're absolutely fine and they've still managed to get just as good grades as all those students who have got fancy equipment. So don't be put off by what equipment somebody else is using for their notes. It does not necessarily mean they're going to be better than yours. In terms of the actual program you're gonna use for making notes, I will be the first person to admit that I have not got this sussed out. I am a grandma, I use Microsoft Word and it is wholly inefficient. If I was going back to first year me, I would say do not start on Microsoft Word. It's quite difficult to switch between programs halfway through your course and to be honest, you don't want to be doing that because you want all your notes to be in one place. So instead of using Microsoft Word like I have, the programs that I would recommend are if your university is on Microsoft, so I know that LSE is Microsoft based in terms of email, you can use OneNote, which is basically like a digital notebook. So you'll be able to search through all of your notes at once um, to find anything on, I don't know, name a topic, uh, gentrification in the case of geography um, and everything that is on that will come up and you can also download your readings literally into the system uh, if you are using OneNote if they're in PDF format and then you can search through all of your readings and all of your notes at once which is so useful however I know a lot of other students use Google Docs um, obviously then you have your notes if you're doing like week one on each document they are separated but you can search across the whole system the major benefit to both of these programs is that because it is stored online um, and your notes are actually in the cloud whatever the cloud is um, I'm such a grandma here um, you are able to access them from anywhere so if you forget your laptop or you're going to a friend and you suddenly need to do some work last minute and access your notes, um, you can log on to a computer and you should be able to find your notes online. And I've forgotten to mention the program that is considered the, the goddess of all of these, which is Notion. I'm gonna be honest with you, personally, I find it far too complicated. It is too complex to set up in the first place and I just can't really be bothered. However, I know some students, and I've seen some students use this so successfully. So if you've got a bit of time on your hands and you're prepared to dedicate it to setting up a really useful system that's gonna function for you for all three years, then I would say Notion is another great option. It is also free for students, the same with uh, Google Drive, that is free for students. And I'm not entirely sure about how you'd go setting up your own Microsoft account so that you can use OneNote. Um, but I believe if you have a Hotmail account, you have access to that. So again, that should be a free option. So all of those three options that I've talked through are free. Uh, Microsoft Word, however, you do actually have to pay, I think, um, for the like office suite. So I would say, considering we're in the digital age, you can get cloud-based systems. Um, they're probably gonna be a much better option anyway. So don't worry about getting Word downloaded on your laptop if you don't already have it. You've sorted out the practical things of on what device you're gonna take your notes and on what program you're gonna use but what are you actually going to write on that document or what are you actually gonna write on that digital notebook? 
The one thing that I would say, and this is my top tip on note taking, and I know it's slightly controversial, not everybody does it, is if you get your lecture materials before the lecture itself, so you get your PowerPoints released online or you get a PDF released online with all the notes of what you're going to cover in the lecture, write this up before you even walk into the lecture theater. The process of writing up these notes before I go into the lecture theater is hands down the most useful time I will spend on writing notes in the entire week. Forget the reading, forget the lecture itself, that time where I actually sit down and focus on what my lecture is going to cover and start thinking through it myself really helps to prepare me for what I'm then going to see in the lecture. It means when I go and sit there, I actually have a little bit of background knowledge of what's being covered so that I can actually focus on the value added that that lecturer is giving me. And it also really helps to embed what I'm actually learning because I'm not seeing that content for the first time. I'm actually looking at it maybe a day or even a couple of hours beforehand. I'm then doing something else and coming away from it. And then I'm going back and I'm having to rethink through that content again. It's very similar to if you've heard about active recall as a study technique. It's very similar to that, but in terms of your lecture notes. But how does this look practically for me? About two hours before my lecture, I will go onto Moodle, which is our online learning platform at LSE. I will download my PDF lecture. It will be in PowerPoint, but it will be saved as PDF form. So I'll download that, put that on one side of my screen. Now, I want to say here, there are programs that you can use which will turn your PDF into a Word document with all of the notes on which you can just copy and paste. There are also um, other programs that you can use online or other websites that you can use to make a PDF PowerPoint into an actual PowerPoint that you can edit. And whilst I would say these are really beneficial, the actual process of me having to go through, read what my lecturer has written, and then type it out myself, I find is a really good way of actually forcing myself to think about that content because you can't just mindlessly copy text from one document to another. Um, you actually have to consciously think about what you're writing. Whilst I'm doing this, I will also look at any words that I don't understand because some of my lecturers talk in absolute jargon. And what I'll do is I'll Google the word. I'll say, oh, what does name a word mean? And it will come up with another word that I'm actually familiar with. And I'll think, well, why do we need to use this really complicated language? So then I will change any words that I don't understand in those lecture notes to something that I'm more familiar with. This means instead of turning up to the lecture, then downloading the PowerPoint, looking at it whilst my lecturer is talking away in language that I just don't understand. And I'm sat there thinking, I don't even understand what the sentence on the slide means. So I don't understand what you're actually saying about it. I've actually thought about that beforehand. I've changed it into language I understand, which means when my lecturer starts talking, in my head I can be replacing that word and actually understanding what they're talking about. So I'll change any text that I don't understand. And by the end, it will take me about 20 minutes, half an hour, I will have a complete set of notes and in my head I'll also have a bit of an understanding about what we're going to talk about. Now if there's any particular topic, so if there's whole slides that I don't understand anything about, I'll sometimes type in um, the title of the slide into Google. So for example, if we're learning about something called accumulation by dispossession, I will type into Google what is accumulation by dispossession and I will get a sentence about what it's about. Now often this won't make a lot of sense, but just that process of having a little bit more thought put into the topic will really help so that when I come into the lecture, I know those are the slides that I really need to listen on. Because let's be honest, you're sitting in a lecture for two hours. You are not gonna give 100% of your attention for two whole hours. When it gets to the slides that you do not understand the content of, that is when you need to be giving 100%. And whilst this is making me sound like I am being a bit of a lazy student, I think what you really need to understand is with university, you cannot give 100% all of the time. You are having so much information thrown at you all the time and not all of it is equally important. There will be certain weeks which you will write essays on, which you need to know everything about that topic. And there'll be other weeks which don't get examined. You're never gonna know which weeks these are going to be, but at least by working smart and getting the overall gist of what is going on each week, you are gonna have a better understanding of the course as a whole by the end of that module. I always think of taking your notes for university a bit like drawing a picture. Before I even go into the lecture, by writing those notes beforehand, I'm drawing an outline of that picture. Then when I go into the lecture, I can focus on what my lecturer is adding to those lecture slides. That's like adding more detail to the picture. Then when you go in and do your reading, that is like adding color to a picture. And that's the next thing that I want to draw your attention to. I personally will always do lecture notes first, and then I'll go to the lecture, add anything that my lecturer says that's of particular use. Then I will do my reading. Because with university, you don't have a set syllabus like you do for GCSEs or A-levels, where you can print off what you're actually supposed to be learning. Instead, a lot of the time, it depends on what you're taught in the lecture, and that is the general content for the week. 
then your reading is there to supplement what you are learning in the lecture. Now, a lot of lecturers, and I know that in my first year, the message that I was always given was do your readings before you go to the lecture because it gives you this base understanding. But I'm gonna be honest, the way that readings are often written, they are super complicated. So actually, I find that going to the lecture first, listening to what the general outline of the topic is, then helps to frame my reading so that I really know what the message is that I'm trying to take out of that reading. And it means I can do it so much quicker. For the first six months of university, I used to do my readings first and I would spend hours literal hours reading the same thing over and over again and I'd be so stressed because I didn't understand this particular paragraph in this reading but it wasn't important it wasn't the main focus and it didn't help with the overall message of the reading which is what you're really trying to take out of it which again brings me on to the next section which is how on earth do you write your reading notes first of all I do not want to see any highlighter pens you need to be actively looking at that reading by highlighting half the reading you are not actually thinking about what has been written there you that is very very passive you want to be adding your reading notes into your already created lecture notes because then you're going to be making sure that what you're taking out of the reading is actually directly relevant to the points that are being made that week and that is what's basically forming your syllabus. You also want to make sure if you are doing direct quotes from the reading, you are writing down the page numbers because when you want to go back to that and you want to use that quote in an essay, you do not want to be searching through a 28 page reading for a particular sentence. Where possible, you want to be summarizing your readings as much as you possibly can. Uh, during first year, some of my summaries of readings tended to be as long as the readings themselves. This is not beneficial, it's not helpful. It used to take me hours to write them. Um, but now I try and kind of limit myself to half an A4 page and max one A4 page per reading because even if the reading is 20, 30 pages long, there's not going to be that much useful content in there. You need to get the overall message of the reading and then you need to get four or five maybe key points that are coming out of that reading because when you come to talk about it in an essay, unless the entire essay is on one particular reading, in which case you'll need to read the text more closely, um, you are just going to need the overall message of what is being said. And then at the end of the term, I'll take my lecture notes, I'll put them all together in one big document, and then I will take out anything that I think is irrelevant. And this is where you need to be really ruthless. Anything that you don't think you're going to use directly in an essay, just take it out. And you will hopefully by this point have developed a bit of an understanding. Hopefully you'll have done some coursework, you'll have written at least one essay. So you'll know what sort of thing is gonna be useful and what can actually be examined because there's gonna be some content that cannot be examined. And one prime example I'm gonna give of this is maps. So in geography, a lot of the time, some of our lecture slides will literally just be a map. And how on earth are you ever going to include an entire map in an essay? You're not. You're gonna talk about the trend that comes out of that map. You'll only need to know one sentence. You don't need to know everything that, that map possibly shows. So adding it into your notes is not particularly beneficial because you've then not done the work of trying to work out what the overall trend is. So hopefully by the end of the term, you'll be able to go through your notes and anything like a map, or um, any content that's like a very specific example that clearly your lecturer has added in for your understanding, but not necessarily that would be used in an essay or be used in your answers for an exam. You can then take that out and you will have a more condensed a more useful set of notes. The main aim with your notes for university really is work smart, not hard. We don't want 5,000 words on a piece of paper when 500 would be a lot more useful and would suffice. And the last thing I want to say is I want to just reassure you, I have had two years of developing a note system that works for me. And what works for me isn't necessarily is gonna work for you. There are gonna be different ways of taking notes which are equally as effective and equally as useful. But hopefully by giving you a bit of an idea of the things that I think about when I'm writing my notes, so what can be examined, what is actually gonna be useful, and how can I make this an active process rather than a passive process, will help to guide you in working out what note system is gonna work best for you and even if you do decide to go down the same route as me and you decide to use this note system I again have had time and experience to work out what is useful and what is not and I've sped up this process massively from where I was in first year if you are spending hours doing your reading and everybody else is like oh I finished that in 20 minutes don't worry, don't be afraid to ignore what other people are saying because going to university can be really daunting. There are gonna be people who just get it like that and it seems really unfair. And then there's gonna be people like me who took six months to a year to really settle into university, really work out 
what the style of learning was and how I was going to make that work for me. Anyway, with that, I'm going to stop waffling on. I hope that you found this useful. If you've got any comments, any ways that you write your notes that you think would be useful for other people, please do leave them in the comments section down below. If you have found this useful or reassuring, give it a big thumbs up so that I know to make more videos like this. And I will see you next time with a new video. Bye.